Thank you very much, Presiding Officer. The UK and Scottish COVID inquiries were set up to give answers to thousands of families who lost loved ones during the pandemic and everyone who suffered. They must be at the forefront of our thoughts today. And I also want to state at this point that the Scottish Conservatives believe it should be the First Minister delivering this statement today and being held accountable in this Parliament today. With respect to evidence to the inquiries, uh, Nicola Sturgeon, who is in the chamber today, promised in August 2021 that nothing would be off limits, including WhatsApp messages. But now the stench of secrecy from this government is overpowering. Yep. Because at the weekend, it was revealed that Nicola Sturgeon had manually deleted messages. And it's also been uh, revealed that Scotland's most senior clinician, Jason Leach, also deleted WhatsApp messages on a daily basis. So while today the Deputy First Minister has said the SNP government will now provide 14,000 WhatsApp messages, almost a year after they were originally asked for, does that figure include all messages from Nicola Sturgeon, from Jason Leach and any others who had deleted messages? If so, how were they recovered? If not, how does the Deputy First Minister defend this cover-up. We know that in June 2021, the Scottish Government were told not to destroy any communication relating to the pandemic. So can the Deputy First Minister tell us if any messages were destroyed after that date? If they were, does the Deputy First Minister accept that any SNP minister or former minister, including Nicola Sturgeon, would have broken the law if they had done so? And finally, Many of the issues that are causing concern just now relate to disappearing messages. We've seen correspondence which suggests that the Deputy First Minister herself has had de uh, disappearing messages turned on on her WhatsApp account. Is that true? And does she still have disappearing messages turned on on her WhatsApp account? Thank you. Deputy First Minister. Th thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, where I do agree uh, with Douglas Ross is that the families are at the forefront of this. And that is why it is important that we give as much information as is possible to give. And that's why 19,000 documents have, of course, already been given. And I need to explain again something that I explained in my statement. And that is that the first tranche of uh, queries and asks from the inquiry related to decision making. That was, that was the response of the 19,000 documents to that request. It was then in June that the inquiry of this year, June in this, of this year, that the inquiry came back asking for groups of WhatsApp messages, what the title of those groups were and who were members of those groups. It was then September just September when they came asking for those individual messages. So it's not correct to say that it's been a year since that request was made. It has only been just over a month. We then had to ask for the Section 21 order because of the nature of those messages. That order came in yesterday and those 14,000 WhatsApp messages will be uh, given to the inquiry by the deadline of the 6th of November. Now, I said in my statement very clearly that I cannot say who those messages are from and what the content is because I'm not allowed to. I don't see them. That is a confidential set of information requests. Deputy First Minister, can I just ask members to ensure that we can all hear the Deputy First Minister? That is um, the, the confidential nature of what the inquiry has asked for. If I was to breach that and ask for uh, information from officials that do not share that information with anyone, that would be a breach of the confidential requirements of the inquiry itself. So I don't know who those 14,000 messages are from, other than they are from, they do include ministers and former ministers and officials. The only Mr. person Ross. I do know of that has provided uh, those and will provide those WhatsApp messages as the First Minister himself because he has publicly stated so. Beyond that, I don't know who uh, those 14,000 WhatsApp messages relate to. 
If those are published, that is in the gift of the inquiry itself, and they will decide whether or not any of those messages uh, are, um, are released. In terms of the, the disappearing uh, messages, let me say this. In terms of my use of WhatsApp with my private office, for example, any decision around I ask for information or I ask for something to be taken forward, that is then recorded on the system because otherwise it wouldn't happen. So it is recorded on the system. Other messages like do I want a coffee or what is my time of arrival, we wouldn't hold on to those messages because it, that wouldn't comply with the data management policy. So I hope I've managed to give Douglas Ross the answers to his questions that he asked. Thank you. I call Jack